Hello, my spooky friends, <laughs> and welcome back to my channel, or welcome to, if you are new. Um, I've been gone for not very long, <laughs> but long enough that, um, I feel like I haven't sat with you in a minute. <laughs> so, I wanted to do a spooky update. Um, I think we're on spooky update number three. Um, on just what's been going on. Um, it's just, we're renovating still and we're getting so close. It's so exciting. Um, we, as you can see, I'm, there's like plywood here back here. <laughs> and, um, we're in the bottom floor of my home. Um, we have just about finished the upstairs. The upstairs is where my kitchen, bathroom, and my living room for, um, all, just all purposes for right now, my bedroom are. Um, and now we're on to the bottom floor. This is where my living room will be. My laundry room and my office are down here for the time being. Um, we have laid down carpet, um, and it was cheaper to keep the plywood that we have and we're going to be doing drywall down here, um, I believe, um, next week. Um, we just put in our heating system, and so it'll be nice and cozy. And, um, I am just so grateful and so excited, um, this has been a uh, adventure for me, um, and I know most, most people <laughs> in these situations, um, I've seen so many people who, like, they'll go run somewhere and there's like, I don't know, like minor issues and they act like, I can't, I can't even stay there, I can't even stay there. That is not me. <laughs> I, we were given somewhere to renovate from family. Um, I went deep in the hole to renovate. I was renting previously at a place that was just awful. Um, I lived next to my mother-in-law. Don't recommend it. Um, and, um, we were given this place and we, it was just bones. There was nothing else. So we had to rewire, put in plumbing, had to put in water, had to do sewer, had to everything, everything from scratch, putting up drywall, putting in walls, um, bathroom, kitchen, everything. There was nothing here except for bones. And, um, I pretty much got my bedroom done and moved in, period. And we have been very steadily getting things done. And, um, I'm just, I'm excited. Um, I've been able to really pick what I want, and my boyfriend is so, um, savvy with those things, and has really went out of his way to, um, really just make our dreams come true, and I'm very grateful for him and his hard work. Um, he has done amazing work that, um, I just, 
it's very exciting to see the images in your head really come to life and become real and he has just <laughs> he has just really worked hard to um, make our home and um, I just am so grateful um, we've been very um, blessed in the fact that I have family that has um, extra things that we can use and um, we saved a lot of money that way and it's just been a very um, just an, a very fun experience um, and I just want to be the one to tell you that your dreams aren't crazy if you have an idea in your head of something that you want to do that does not cause harm to yourself, others, um, anything living, um, do it. Um, I had a dream when I, me and my boyfriend had walked into this place and we had been so defeated because our last place, it was a, um, duplex and we wanted to buy it but um, due to how the other tenant lives um, we did not want to do that because it just wasn't going to be cost effective and there were things wrong with the soil and it was just too much money um, and that was really our dream to begin with was getting that but it just, it wouldn't have worked. And we were so defeated and we, it makes, like my landlord went to um, sell the house and random people were walking through and I was having to like leave my house for them to show my house. And it was just, very low point in my life and we were so defeated and we were out and about because we couldn't stay at my house and it's in the middle of winter um, and they would like show the house for hours at a time which I understand wanting to sell like I'm not saying that I'm angry at them for wanting to move on. I'm not saying that, but being courteous, like we would have to take all of our animals <laughs> and leave and just pretty much sit and wait. So we were out and about and we came over to the place next to my parents and um, we were just walking through and I had always when I was younger this was where I like made like my little hangouts as a child this is where me and my friends like spray painted and we called it the hang and we had like just made our own little like play playroom and I had always, when I was younger, been like, it would be nice to put like an apartment or a house here because there's a top floor and then there's a bottom and there's a garage in the front. And um, it was basically a place for just storage. Um, the people who had owned this place before my parents had a s fur shop here. And um, then they gutted it before they sold it for some reason. But anyway, we were walking through and I looked at him and he looked at me and I was like, you think that we could make this into a home? And 
he starts like tapping on the walls and like <laughs> looking at the boards and everything and he goes I think I could put drywall on that <laughs> and um here we are um I told my parents well I didn't tell them I asked them obviously and um my parents were very worried about our um living situation and um they were very happy for me to ask that they said as long as you can pay for everything that you do go ahead so we did it and um we're still doing it and we just put carpet down here um Upstairs is pretty much done. Um, besides, we have to put up paint in the living room and bathroom and kitchen. Um, the bathroom is a little... We're working on getting the... Um, the... I like, um, like the white marble look, but I don't want to pay. Absurd. So I'm going to get the peel and stick and I'm going to put wallpaper in the front half of the bathroom and then put um, white marble in where the shower is and on that wall. And I think that will look really nice. Um, we have made everything from scratch. <laughs> My parents had extra kitchen cabinets, only the bottom, that I had played on for like my whole life in our basement next door. And they said that I could take them, so we revamped them, made them look nicer. I got some new knobs that we have to put on. Um, we got our sink um, for my grandparents as a housewarming gift. Um, we got a stove for free. We found that on the side of the road. Um, I did get myself a nice new fridge, and I will not apologize for it. I've wanted a French door fridge for a very long time. Just paid it off. We're living, living large. Um, a lot of the things that I have are used and I don't I don't understand the mentality of being above like used things I don't understand it um I mean when I was younger everyone tells me I was spoiled but the gist of that is that I never needed for anything I always had new things, and as an adult, I have become more mature, I think. Um, I, I spend my money smartly, and a bargain is a bargain, baby. It is a bargain, and I am not above um, cleaning and revamping something to use it. Um, I am not a very bougie woman. I will never be because I think used things have character and I just, as long as you clean it and make it look nice yourself and apply it to your surroundings, it's fine. Um, we got our sink for our bathroom on the side of the road, not above it. Um, and then we got our front door from the side of the road as well. It was a old door unit for free, for free. Um, it had a, um, glass door for the front and a wooden door with panels. And it was like a whole unit. So, y'all can, like, t 
talk about free things all you want, but I ain't above it, and I will never be above it. yeah we are slowly moving forward um we're insulating we're getting all the things that we need done done and it's just an exciting experience i highly recommend it everyone has told me since <laughs> if you can get through a renovation together you're set and him and I have had a lot of fun doing this. Um, it's just been fun. Even when we first moved in and we were having to get like rotisserie chicken and microwavable food for like a week, it was fun because we were like roughing it together and um, I don't know. I think um, when you become too, like, bougie for this life, you end up not appreciating the small things, and life is so, it owes you nothing, first of all, but second of all, the little things are what make it, like, that's what makes it, and, um, when you have such a high standard for things, you overlook the small things that are good things. And, um, I just, I'm having a blast. I'm telling you, it's been fun. And, um, when we finish, I plan on doing a video for you guys. I, I don't want to do it before because I just don't, um, Although our community is very nice, and I love you guys and your input, some people aren't so nice, and people want perfection, um, and this is not perfection yet. We will get there, I know we will, but it takes time, and um, I am on a budget, so we do things as we can, and um, I'm just, it's a good time right now, and I'm just so grateful, so grateful, can't say it enough, I'm so grateful, because me a year ago was really just praying and hoping for a miracle, for something good, and, um, we made something good, and, um, very happy. I'm very happy. Um, I spend a lot of time with my family, a lot more than I was, um, and living where I am now, which is, it's only 10 minutes from where I was living, like maybe 15, it's kind of made me realize what family really is, um, worth my time. Um, I, we're like maybe 20 minutes from where his family lives, and they have not been here because it's too far. And, um, they have not helped <laughs> at all, um, and I'm not expecting it from them, but it makes me feel bad. Um, his, his one side of the family helps him a lot, and I'm very grateful for them, but the other, it makes me sad for him, because, um, they just can't be bothered, and they kind of saw us moving as, like, we wanted to get away from them, which was not the case, we just wanted to start our family. And that doesn't mean having children just yet. But we wanted to start our story. And even with living 
right next door to my family were still separate households and um, they're very respectful of me and I'm respectful of them and it's just a better dynamic than what we were working with prior and um, this was just a very good thing in a million more ways than one so um, that's the renovation story um, I wanted to go into more detail on what, um, things I've learned in this time span. Um, I have come to terms with the fact that I'm content in keeping my circle small. I feel like there's always this pressure to, like, have the most friends and to buy these expensive things, like, just all these things to, like, screen your worth to other people. And I just don't, it doesn't resonate with me. I don't affiliate with that anymore. Like, I get some things, things that I need or things that I work hard for, but I don't just frivolously get things to prove my success or my worth to social media or other people. Um, I think we live in a world where I believe they call it like hyper consumerism, something like that, but like people are so focused on stuff and proving to people, well, my life is better because I have this and it's just, they're miserable. Um, like, we know you're miserable. We are all having and living just different verbiages of the same life. We all have struggles, and I firmly believe that more money is just more stress in more ways than one. Because you see how people who get that money don't think far ahead, and they just jump on to let me get the most expensive everything and then they become out of touch and just I'm just content in my little corner doing the best I can um, to just be a good human being and to just be kind um, I no longer waste my time thinking um, about passing a test for other people and what I mean by that is I know my worth and I know um, what I'm capable of and I don't need someone else to confirm that for me. So, um, I just wanted to remind you that you're doing the best that you can is good enough. It's more than good enough. Um, the best that you can is the best, always. Um, and you don't need to get a 2024 vehicle to prove your worth or success. Um, I am rich in many things that people who have the newest vehicles, the newest everything, Gucci shoes, Gucci flip-flops, all that stuff. I'm rich in other ways, and you need to remind yourself that being rich doesn't mean monetary, or um, it doesn't come down to things. Um, it comes down to your well-being and your s mental status and health, and just the love that you give and receive around you. Um, I think with COVID, um, I think it made a lot of people become selfish. Um, and maybe not just selfish, but just so self-involved. And I think that it was something that we needed 
but also something that has brought out a very different kind of generation and people. I think because we all were stuck inside, we thought it's just us against them, us and them, and we are all a collective. We are all, I'm not saying you have to help everybody because it's impossible, but I think we need to work on being kinder. Um, I feel like it's just made us so cold and I found myself like at work and things like that when someone, I, like a co-worker would tell me about their life, I'd be like, who gives a fuck? Who cares? Like, I have my own things, I don't care about your things. And it's such a selfish thing and way to think. Um, not everybody has the support systems that you do, and, um, I think we're so, like, focused on our issues that we don't want to be bothered by other people's issues, because we're like, oh, you're gonna stress me out, but we need to take a step back and just be there to listen. Um, I've always been the one to listen, but in my head, I was saying those things. I would never say that to someone out loud, but in my head, I was like, why are you coming to me with your stress? I have my own. And I just, cat, in case you were wondering, um, I just needed to remind myself that all of these stresses and all these things, just because someone brings stress to you doesn't mean you have to fix it. You're there to just, you're there for the monologue. That's what you're there for. And I always had this mentality where I had to fix everything and just not everything can be fixed. And most of the time you're fixing or doing your your part by just being present with somebody and just being a listening um, just listening to somebody is very helpful and I think as a whole society we just need to stop dividing ourselves from each other we need to come together and um, become kinder and become more aware of each other in a way that we accept each other. Um, I think we've just become so hateful and judgmental and I don't want to identify with that anymore. I don't. Um, I want to be that safe space for people and I want to be, um, radiating that warmth that we also desperately need. We do. And not everybody is able to do that, but if you lead by example, good things do. People do, um, like, follow. They do. They, they see how you are and how that affects your mindset by being that way, by being a positive light, you bring positivity to yourself and that feel-good feeling. And I just think we need more of that right now. I think it's just so dark and um, depressing out here and we need to be, I think because of social media where we kind of just post the highlights um, it makes us think that the highlights are like what everybody else has every day. That's not true. Um, people only post what will, what is relevant and what is good. They don't just post things that, they don't tell you, like, I'm late on my bills and I... I had to 
apply for food stamps or I just lost my car or people don't post those things and it's just one of those things that we need to talk about more. It needs to be talked about. It needs to be um, a conversation. Um, and I think we've had it many times before, but I don't think people are really understanding that because I don't know. I don't think we can fix everybody. <laughs> but I would just like to be helpful to some. So, I think I have ranted for quite long enough. Um, that is today's spooky update. Um, I will be back and, um, back on our schedule for our true crime ASMR series. Um, it's very hard for me to record sometimes when we're renovating because they start early and then I work a full 40 hours a week to five and then my weekends I'm working here so it was just difficult for me to do that last week but um, we are going to be back on track I have just filmed our Cecil Hotel part one which will be out on Monday um, I hope that this video was relaxing and um, informative for you, um, and I hope I made sense. <laughs> um, I try to give you guys my input and my um, just my thoughts, and I hope that it is helpful. Um, thank you so much to all of you who subscribe and take the time to hang out with me. Um, I really appreciate you and your input and your, um, your role in this community. Um, we've created this little spooky community that is so, um, you guys are fun and you're funny and you're very caring and so positive and, um, I just, I'm very grateful for you. I'm very grateful, and um, I will see you guys again soon. Thank you so, so much, and as always, spooky dreams, my friends.